Why is she driving you crazy, Grandma? I'd like to hear about it. Oh, she is just so perfect. Big pain I mean, in the ass. I know. I hear. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> <laughs> no expression on her face. She just goes about everything, just perfection. You know? Yeah. Listen, that's, Martha. <laughs> that's Martha. That's <laughs> Martha. First, I want to ask you where the name Francel came from. Well, my folks had already named me or seen us after my grandmother when I was in, hadn't left the hospital yet. And then Uncle uh, Raul was in France and he had a lady working with him there and it was during the war. And uh, he was in the army, I guess. He sent this name Francel. And so they changed it to Francel. Oh, really? And so that's that's what I was named, you know. And you know when we went to get our Social Security when Rocky had to retire because of his heart and everything, I asked Mom for my uh, birth certificate. <laughs> and she sent it to me. And it's our seamless, it's not Francel. Really? And I thought, well, now what do I do? <laughs> so I just took it to, he had his, things and I had mine. We took it to uh, Social Security and she said, well, don't worry about everything you've ever had. It's been friends so. What city were you born in? Salt Lake. Salt Lake. And it, how, how much of your childhood did you spend there? Um, until I was uh, 12. And the folks bought uh, a little half acre out and uh, they called it East Mill Creek. Uh, out of Salt Lake ways in the country and uh, oh we were all just real happy there with that little half acre you know and my dad planted a big garden and he was even on uh, what do you call it when you get your water irrigation yeah. and it was coming at, at an evening so his brothers came out and, and they uh, irrigated that night everybody was out there directing that little water and the, all of the plants that he planted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big, exciting thing. He got his irrigation. I went to junior high in uh, Murray. They didn't have a junior high in East Mill Creek. I think Donna went to grade school. But, so I, there was a bus took me there. And then we weren't there very long a year. And Daddy's, uh, the DNRG, changed their uh, offices to Denver, Colorado. So he was chief payroll clerk, and so he had to go with him or, or give up a job he'd worked at. We had to give up our little farm and go to Denver, and that was a, that was a horrible change for us, you know. Really? <laughs> the first time we were there, we were living in apartments. Uh, there were, made apartments out of houses is what they had done it was close to Murray Junior High and that's where I was going to go to school and that uh, it wasn't our little half acre farm you know yeah <laughs> I cried all the way from <laughs> from Salt Lake to Denver just because we had to leave you know <laughs> And it was a hard time to get over that. Great big old city and, <laughs> you know. Not a good transition. Poor daddy, the first, one of the first time he was there by himself, you know. And one night he was um, stopped at a light downtown. I guess he was just coming home uh, from his office or something. And a man jumped up, opened the door, shoved another man in the car, and two day to drive and he beat up this man all the time he was in the car but just from them roughing around i think he got kind of yeah i don't wow. remember that gave you a good impression oh that's oh, gonna be a nice yes <laughs> in some of these places you know that we lived in they were just uh, 
older houses and they made them into apartments, you know. It wasn't a house or anything, you know, it was oh. an apartment. We'd never lived in an apartment before. Shrunk down, <laughs> shrunk down to a box. Yeah, it took a long time before we got a house. Uh, two bedroom place and that was nice. We were there all through my high school. 535 East 6th. <laughs> oh. Yeah. What was high school like for you? What was high Well, school? I went to Maury Junior High. It's I was still in junior high. Oh. When I got to Denver. So I was there 8th and 9th grade. Mm. And then I was in West High School. Uh, 10th, 11th, 12th. Oh, it was good. I, I liked it because I got to have so many different subjects and, and I, I had, uh, I took art and clay modeling and that was, you know, you got to choose some subjects, you know. Yeah. Why don't you show us? That, that's from my senior dinner, high school senior dinner. When we had our senior dinner, I talked to some of the kids and I said, they should let us take this just to be a souvenir from our, and, uh, the, one of the cheerleaders was sitting nearby, and, and when we were leaving, I was getting my stuff out of my locker, and he come down the hall. Hey, Tiny, here's your dish. <laughs> what? I thought I was one wanted to go to college, and so I was first taking courses. That, you know, you had to have to go to college, and then I decided, well. It's during the depression. I wasn't going to be able to make that, you know. Oh. So I changed it to uh, typing and bookkeeping and <laughs> oh. all that, you know, that would help me get a job. Mm -hmm. Took Spanish also. And we were, loved the football games. All the high schools at that time used DU Stadium. So we would ride the streetcar clear out there to that. When kids didn't have cars in those days, <laughs> If you want to borrow your dad's, maybe it was during the Depression. Uh -huh. I went to the study with a boy that his dad was uh, a senator, uh, Jim Hill, and uh, every once in a while he'd get to borrow his dad's car, and it had a rumble seat, and so we'd have <laughs> about six kids in that car. <laughs> oh, that's cool. We were going to go out and be cheerleaders. Some of us girls, you know, they didn't have any girl cheerleaders. They had boys. Really? And uh, so all oh, the guys saw that. That's great. So they were teaching us, and we were going to have an assembly, and everybody was going to vote on who could be the cheerleader, and we were all excited about that. <laughs> and Mrs. Sweet, who wasn't very sweet, <laughs> was the ladies. What do you call her? Captain. Yeah. And no way, I'm not gonna have any girls jumping around out there. And, uh, no. You're so it was always boys before girls? Before, yeah, it was four cheerleaders. Interesting. That was a disappointment. We were all, I don't know, there was about six of us who was crying out for it, you know. What was your relationship like with your parents? My parents? Yeah. No, we were all just kind of friends, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> They were really into the church there, and it was only a couple of blocks away. And uh, Mom was president of the Relief Society, and um, Daddy was uh, into the genealogy part of it, you know. But they weren't strict religious or anything. They, and they loved nature, loved camping. And yeah. So we did a lot of that, you know. That's what I liked. Your mom was a rock hound, right? Yeah, both of them. Yeah, they uh, well, they got that's where they got acquainted with uh, Joyce's folks. They were rock hounds, and that's where uh, they met through them, through the Joyce's folks and my folks. Oh, really? Yeah, that's where they met each other. My dad has a, and he used to love to take movies. I've got oh, I don't know how many. Have you ever seen any of them? Oh yeah, your eight millimeter. Yeah. 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 And Very there's nice. the neatest. He come to California to visit us. And he took some movies of the kids playing in the stream that was there in Corona, and uh, he had taken pictures of uh, Joyce when she was uh, in the mountains there in Wyoming, Montana, 
were doing their rock hunting, you know. And it turned out, I don't know how he did it, but double exposure. And here's Rick and Joyce, never met each other, you know. He was in high school here and she was in high school there. Yeah. And they were together. On the video? In I mean, the, on the film? In the movie. <laughs> Isn't oh, that wow. neat? Yeah. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah. Mom played the ukulele and Daddy played the guitar. Really? I don't know how they picked those things up. You know? <laughs> and they couldn't understand why I couldn't pick up that mouth organ. Uh, oh, uh. Harmonica. Oh. And play it. I play the piano. Why can't I? I envy people that <laughs> play by ear. Back in Denver, when you kind of started becoming independent in high school, what kind of places did you like to go to for recreation? Like, did you have favorite haunts? Skating was the thing that I liked to do. Yeah. They had a big, started out with a little old rink, some building downtown Denver, garage or something that was made over it. And uh, and then they built a nice uh, rink on Broadway that wasn't too far away from us. And so, uh, and I learned to do some of the dances on skates, you know. And, and yeah. I could uh, I entered some of the races, but I wasn't. I didn't. Uh, I competed until I you had about three chances. If you come in first, second, or third, you got into the big race, you know. Oh yeah. So uh, three times I tried and I finally come in third. And <laughs> yeah? I got to be in the big race, but they added oh, three or four more laps and I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I just collapsed at the end of the, end of the rinks there onto the stool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Daddy taught me to drive. He took me out to DU Stadium where the parking lot is, you know. And, uh, He'd have me drive around that and back up, turn around, do, you know. Oh, yeah? And so I learned how to drive. What kind of car was that? See, that was a Chevrolet, I think. I don't know what year that was. First car I remember when we were in grade school was a Model T. Really? <laughs> I've got pictures of that. And they had that Model T for, well, until we left Salt Lake. Yeah. Did you, did you work in Salt Lake? I mean, I'm sorry, I meant uh, Denver. Did you work in Denver? Denver? Yeah, I worked um, a bit for a florist that, lived, that was right up in the next block. They had a little business thing. Uh, but I, I worked there with them and learned uh, a lot about plants and then typed up the bills, you know, for yeah. at the end of the month. Snapdragons. And these are the little pansies. These are Susans. And these, I don't know what they are. That pot was full of little bulbs. So I fed it and watered it, and now it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> this is new, Grandma. You've got these buckets. What's going on there? Yeah, I know, Roy and Teresa. You gotta plant in containers, Mom. <laughs> Stop trying to plant all around. Oh. So they brought these over, filled them with dirt, and oh. so I start planting. <laughs> so I can grow. You got. You know, when we moved here, this whole thing was in cactus. I remember that. All different kinds of cactus. Prickly and they pear. They all died except this one. And I need to. Uh, I need to get into the middle of this and cut all this old off so if these new ones can come out. This is beautiful when it blooms. It's blue. Sometimes it's pink and white, sometimes it's blue and white. It was really pretty when it was. Oh, that'll plate me a day or so. <laughs> Well, don't show this to gardeners. <laughs> don't try this at home. To do this. <laughs> this really isn't. I would tell Martha Stewart about this. <laughs> yeah, you'll 
probably that would be nice to get a picture of that because it, it goes up there and the water falls down and comes down in here it, it circulates like that when you turn on the pump and that lady used to sit in the middle of it <laughs> How did you and your first husband meet? Well, I, th I met him. He was a diver, uh, competed in uh, diving. Uh, the three meter and the uh, tower. Oh. And uh, we used that used to be our fun thing in the summer. Uh, to, we could walk out to Washington Park Lake from our place on Sixth Avenue. And uh, that, that's where I met him. I used to try to dive, <laughs> do the swan and the jackknife. That was about it, you know. Yeah. I liked it when he was in a pool, but when I tried it out there at the lake, it scared me because there's no end to it. It's deep, you know. And so I would dive and I'd try to come up real fast, you know, because I didn't want to get down too deep. And yeah. I hurt my back a few times doing that. Oh, yeah. So. Vern's sister was working with this man that was trying to get this beauty contest going at Washington Park. And uh, he didn't have enough girls. And he, he saw me one day and he told her to ask me if I'd be in the beauty contest. And I said, what chance would I have? And I, I said, I know I was gonna win a beautiful tall blonde, not a little <laughs> four foot <laughs> brunette. So I was four foot, what, eight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mom and dad, they thought that was big stuff. You know? I didn't go in with any hopes that I was going to win anything. Did Did you and Vern stay in Denver, or did you guys move away? No, we were we were in Denver. He was involved with Denver with the uh, with Vern. <laughs> he uh, was diving. And he was studying that just tension, you know, building up your muscles just with tension and exercises. And then he got into um, doing hand balancing acts with uh, Jack. And then he and another guy built a trampoline and they um, were doing tricks on the trampoline and they even did shows at fairs and that. He was acting on the radio having like you have plays on TV, you know, they were, he built a little studio in one apartment that we had, and uh, he was firm. He had yeah. a lot of things that he did, but he he was involved with them, you know. Yeah. When you two split up, how did Rick re react to that? It didn't seem to bother him much, you know. I guess he just hadn't had that companionship much with him, you know. Yeah. They were real good friends now. Uh, the last few years, he and his wife had been going up there and visiting with them, and he took them to a bush, you know, wanted to show them that. And yeah, they I think they've been closer the last few years than they have, you know, before, before. yeah. So, how did you and Robert meet, Grandpa? On uh, weekends, the, the guys from Camp Hill, it was up in the top of the mountains there, uh, they were in that camp, would come down to Denver. Uh, they had some special little bar there and it had a hotel and that's where the boys would stay, you know, on the weekend. Donna would go, you know, and have some drinks with them. And, uh, she said, you're going to come down and sometime and meet the guys. And so I don't know, I had a date with another boy from uh, the air field out there. We went through the museum and I said, well, okay, I'm going to be downtown. I'll take the streetcar from the museum downtown. And so that's when I met some of them. and. Uh, uh, McAfee was a good friend of Rocky's, and uh, he met me, and he said, uh, I want you to come next weekend, I have somebody I want you to meet, you know, and uh, 
so I come and I met Rocky, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> we just had to meet, and that was it. That was all it took. Yeah, yeah. There's a little town there named uh, Rockaford, and it's famous for Rockaford cantaloupes. Really? And they had uh, races and things there, and so McAfee and uh, Rocky wanted to go, and they were going to enter the races. And they went down and, and did, you know, and had fun there, and that's where he got his name, Rocky Ford. Oh, yeah? <laughs> was he a professional jockey at some time? Yeah. yeah. He was uh, riding in, um, was it Detroit or some place back east when he was drafted. He had a company and they were donkeys that they were training to be, um, they take them up in planes and drop them by parachute down into the mountains and that where the fighting was so hard, they, uh, they really didn't have roads or anything. What was that like between France and Spain and going towards Germany, you know? Oh, yeah. He was telling me about that. He said, those poor little boogers, they didn't, <laughs> they knew it was coming, he said. They had that <laughs> door open on the plane, you know. And he said, take two or three of them in the back home to shove them out, you know. <laughs> and then I don't know, so, somehow automatically they had it work. So they, the parachute opens up, you know. Pulls them out? Yeah. And after they're out, then the parachute opens and then they go on down to the ground. You know? That's funny. <laughs> How did you communicate with Grandpa when he was overseas? Letters. Every night, Donna's husband was in the Navy. Every night we'd sit down and write. We were in that little breakfast nook of mom and dad's and yeah. write to the guys, you know, and it'd be a, sometime it'd be a long time before we'd get anything from them and all of a sudden we'd get maybe four or five letters, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got a box there with all those letters in it. And yeah. your mom said one day, when do we get your, your love letters? And I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe someday. Yeah. Special occasion, yeah. Yeah, but I have, I just, I just saved every one of them, I guess, you know. Yeah. They're in a little box up in my uh, closet. <laughs> His company was sent to Hiroshima to clear up, clean up, fix up after the, and th these are little things that he picked up. And it's got some of the... When you drink and whistle. It's got some of the debris on it. I shouldn't talk about it because I'll cry. Um, but, um, you know, when he was so sick, um, we were kind of struggling along there for a bit, and he had a, a little box, and he had put all that stuff in there. I said, what are you doing, Daddy? He said, well, we could sell these for quite a bit. I said, you could not sell those. You put them right back in there where they belong. Didn't uh, Grandpa train horses for somebody famous? Yeah, he, um, Harry James. Had horses, um, Crosby. I remember one time when the kids, young kids, or uh, Crosby walked by and one of them said, boo, 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 boo. Everyone beneath the sun goes boo, 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 the world is going boo, 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 boo. And he turned around and he said, the only one that's going to boo, boo, boo when this sun. Alfred is me. I want to hear more of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Bing said? That's right. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but Harry James had a... Uh, what was the name of that horse? Uh, because Rocky would talk about him. And uh, <clears throat> one time we saw him in a little club in, um, in Reno. Uh, and he loved to hear his tail on a brass. Rocky did. So I said, well, I'll write a note and I'll, I'll 
put it, ask, I'll take it up there and he'll play it for you. Yeah, he said, uh, I don't know if you remember me, but I used to ride for you. I especially remember El Lobo was a good horse. And uh, so uh, Harry Jack picked up that note, you know, and he read that and he stood there for the longest time thinking, you know, about it, you know, and looked up and I wanted to rave and Rocky grabbed my hand. He wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> so I just sat there. And <laughs> but he played it and he did a good job. It was really beautiful. Yeah. You know. Later down the road, Grandpa got into the sheet metal business. How did that happen? Well, you know, we had started having kids. Yeah. And uh, you would move from one track to the other, or maybe they would uh, give him a job on a ranch and he'd uh, be getting horses back in shape again to go back to the track, you know. Mm -hmm. He was just so good with horses. Uh, just. It was just moving, you know, just too much moving. And uh, Rick was going to school, and Francel was going to school. And let's see, I think I was pregnant with Betty. And we decided, well, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to Denver. I remember when I stepped out of the car when we got there, and Mom saw me. She said, oh, "Tiny, not again." <laughs> <laughs> Well, he, Art had a sheet metal shop, and uh, that's your sister's husband. Uh huh. And so he just, uh, Art said, "Well, I can find things for you to do," and uh, and so he went there just doing odd jobs that you know he could do for him. And then another young guy come along, and he uh, wanted to learn it too. So they uh, studied. They got books and studied and studied. I know Rick has said. How did you do that, Dad? You were only went to junior high school, didn't you? And uh, that's complicated stuff. He said I had to really work hard. To, he did some sheet metal stuff to help himself through college. Yeah. Rick did. And he said I don't know how you. That's a lot of math and stuff. How do you? How did you do that? You know. But anything Rocky said he's mind to, he would do, you know. At one point, you eventually had six kids in the house. So how did you manage to not go crazy? How did you keep a level <laughs> head? I, it just never seemed any different to me than one or two. I mean, yeah. let's see, there was like two years difference in between each one of the kids, you know. <laughs> that didn't problem. bother me at all. Did you guys ever have like financial hardship? As a <laughs> yes. <big family>? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Lots of times. Yeah. yeah. And he worked at a lot of different things. I mean, it wasn't that he, you know, didn't work, but he had had to work at jobs that he could get. You know, he didn't have the like he was the sheet metal. That kind of run out, you know. After the war, they didn't. There wasn't as much demand for it. And he worked for. He moved to Corona and buying a little house there. And uh, he go clear into Los Angeles every day to work. And he was working for a place that um, you know how you have restaurants and they have huge, big uh, aquariums built into the walls, you know. Yeah. So he was building those. Oh, really? That place. Oh. You know. We were buying that little house, and it was right on the river. And um, somebody else bought the land around there, and they were going to make a golf course out of it. So they said that everybody that lived there uh, had to uh, move and take your house with you. That was in Corona? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> and so. <laughs> I wrote a long letter and they, <laughs> and they published it in the paper. They did? <laughs> yes, they did. About uh, these people that think that they can you know, upset a whole life, you know. And, and so I said, well, there's no way we're going to be able to take that house with us. And I hope uh, 
when they open their new uh, golf course, that uh, that'll they'll have what do they call it when a, a, a bad thing for golfers? Uh, a sand what do you call it? A sand pit or something? Yeah. Uh, I hope they all land there. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, where my where my house is in the sand, and have a time yeah. getting out. And I'll be darned if you didn't print that in the paper. That <laughs> I've got that <laughs> <laughs> word for word. That's funny. Yeah, well, that that was that was quite a move. I mean, we just didn't have much to begin with, and we uh, Daddy fixed a truck that we had and built a um, wood sides and everything on it, you know, and so he could pack as much where we long as we could in that truck oh, yeah. and um, kids were stacked in there too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had decided where were we going to go and the Rogue River sounded wonderful. So, <laughs> yeah. and these other people there, they were going to, we were going to go together. Oh. And uh, Miller's was their name. We started out together and we were going to I guess Medford was a, a bigger city. We we're gonna use the post office general delivery and leave a message there if they were if we got separated or something. Oh. Know. And they had most of the food. <laughs> and uh, so going out on the freeways out of Los Angeles, that's the last we saw of Miller's. You're kidding. And so <laughs> the rest of the time we were on our own, you know, and had very little. And we, <laughs> the kids couldn't, wouldn't do without their bounties. We had a little pen that had uh, Gertie and her little baby chicks and the rooster in it. Oh, you're kidding. We'd stop at rest stops and we'd put that little pen down on the ground and we'd open it up and they'd get out and scratch and, and people would <laughs> <laughs> stand around looking, I don't believe this, you know. And, and then we'd go like this and show them back in, and then we'd put it back. Yeah, so it was a hen and chickens? A hen and a rooster. Oh. And just that night before we were going to leave, Francois would come and cry him. I can't find Gertie and the babies. I can't find Gertie and the babies. And we went out. I said, they can't get out of the pen. I went up there, and you know that little rooster was like this. Gertie and the babies were underneath his wings. Oh. He was protecting them. Oh. Isn't that me? <laughs> Figaro is his name. Anyway, we ended up in Grants Pass. And there's the Rogue River, but it wasn't the wild Rogue River that we thought of, you oh. know. It was. It's tapered off in that area. You have to, uh, yeah, you have to get out of the city before you get into the wild mm. Rogue River, you know. But we bought that little one there and we loved that. I've actually driven by that house. It looks like uh, really small for the size of family that you had. Yes. How did that we work? We had uh, a large front room, nice oh, yeah. big kittens, and two bedrooms. And then uh, the girls were in the bedroom. One of the boys was on the couch, and Rocky was on a cot. In the little room it was kind of the washroom and everything before you get to the bathroom. When you guys were in one house together, I, I would imagine holidays and birthdays were probably a little crazy. Um, it's expensive with just a couple of people, so did you like make handmade gifts or anything like that? I used to do a lot of sewing, you know. Yeah. I, every first day of school, I always had to have a new new outfits, you know. So uh, I could make the girls dresses usually and make the boys shirts, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, but that was one thing that we always liked, in, a tradition. Yeah. Have something all brand new, you know, for the first day of school. <laughs> when we got to Grant's Pass, we were just right down to nothing. And we fed the kids, and I said, well, we're going to go to the church. And we went in and talked to our church, the Mormon church, and told them what, you know, what had happened and uh, that our friends had separated and we just, we just left without uh, anything, you know. And so uh, 
they looked up the papers and they called Corona and the kids had been baptized there. And uh, well, of course, my dates back to <laughs> Salt Lake, you know. And so they found a house for us and they put us in this house and paid the rent. And the next, uh, that was on a Saturday, Monday, he went to Rogue River Hardware and he got the job, sheet metal job. That was the biggest sheet metal place in town. And so we were settled in Grant's Pass. Wow. You know. Sheet metal was given out every place, you know. He, that, one, that big place closed and uh, so he was working in Medford, a couple of different places and uh, then that got slow and so he called the union and uh, in Portland. They said, oh yeah, I've got plenty of building going on up here. Oh, so that's what brought you guys up to Vancouver, huh? Yeah. Well. Well, in Portland, it was just a big old city. We didn't want to live there. Yeah. So we came to Vancouver. <laughs> well, we, I, we just had uh, Roy and Susan. Up here? Yeah. That, that really was an upset for Susan. Was it? Oh, she just started junior high. She was a cheerleader and Roy was in football and I mean it was uh, it was hard for them. Yeah. Really hard for them. Mom was telling me that in the late, like in the late fifties you were on a TV show called Queen for a Day. Would you like to be Queen for a Day? Uh, you say, you know, what it is you need or want, you know, and then the audience kind of picks who's the winner of it, you know. That's precisely why we're here. Uh, it ended up with four, but there was maybe seven or eight that we got chosen at first, and then he talked to us, and uh, I got tongue-tied. I, I had added a little note to my card when we got there, and I think that's why he he chose me. Uh, that's when Rocky was working for those places that built those big fish things, you know, and it was a uh, down the busy part of uh, Los Angeles, <clears throat> and uh, there'd been a lot of things stolen, and his big tools were stolen. A lot of they're pretty expensive stuff, and that's I, I put that P.S. note on there, you know, and before I'd said what I needed was fencing for my yard because of my little, Susan was only like two years old and there was a stream close by and she wanted to be with the other kids, you know, and I was afraid for her to be there. I wanted a fence for her. And I forgot to add that, you know, and when he, he turned around and looked at me and I didn't open my mouth, I was, <laughs> but uh, the girl that was with me, got to be one of the four. She wanted a, a cow so she'd have milk for her family or something like that. Yeah. Know? So uh, yeah, that's as uh, close as I got. <laughs> yeah. So was that aired on TV? Really? Yeah. Yeah. My oh. mother saw it yeah. in Denver. <laughs> wow. I said, wonder... oh, I saw your cute little face, you know. <laughs> wow. One thing that you mentioned earlier is that you worked for a uh, steak burger here in Vancouver. So uh, what was that like? Well, that's when we first come here. We were uh, living in little cabins. It used to be at the side of State Burger there. They used to just be like weekend things, you know? <laughs> you can talk about crowded. Uh, <laughs> that was, uh, Roy and Susan had a bunk bed in the front room that was about half as, wasn't even half as the size of this front room in a little kitchen, in a little bedroom that you could just barely walk by the side of the bed, you know, I mean, that's, <laughs> and they built this nice big steak burger, you know, and I had worked in Corona at uh, Gelpies, it was a Mexican place, and uh, where I worked at the window and we fixed the tacos and the drinks and the sodas and malts yeah. and all that business, so I had the experience there, and. Uh, he was surprised that I, Johnson, I, he said, well, you do know how to make an old shake, don't you? I said, well, yeah, I <laughs> Rocky's 21st birthday was there, and we were in that little cabin. And uh, he came up 
from Grant's Pass. And you know, they always wanted a poker game. We had a table like this in the couch and there were about six people around there playing poker on this little coffee table. Yeah. And <laughs> Candy and her girlfriend came with their kids and they wanted to stay. <laughs> so they put uh, their sleeping bag on the floor in the kitchen and that's as much space as there was on that floor. Just big enough to <laughs> spread the the sleeping bag. Yeah. And if you wanted to go to the bathroom, you had to walk over people to get the... <laughs> oh, wow. Families have expanded so much. Can you still count all your grandkids and your great-grandkids? Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I have six kids, but I have, um, I think it's 18. They've kind of multiplied pretty good the last three years. <laughs> New babies, you know. Yeah. Uh, and in great grandkids, there's 12, I think. And I have four great great. Yeah. What were some of the uh, favorite pastimes that you and Grandpa shared after the kids had moved out and you guys had kind of the house to yourself? <laughs> well, still getting out camping, you know. First, we had a little trailer, and then we had our little van, camping van, and we, we loved that. Yeah. We could go lots of, we, we went back down to California and uh, visited some of the people that we knew, you know, and went to Corona and visited his sister and, uh, you know, Frank and Florence. Florence loved to fish. Yeah. We went up to that uh, cab, that Atlanta, where they had a cabin in Idaho. I guess there used to be a lot of mining around there. Oh. And you could wander around up in the woods and see all these shacks that had been, you know, used and long forgotten. And Daddy picked up some old frames, window frames and some of them. And your mom has uh, stained glass. Yes. That's, that's where that frame comes from. The, it looks like a crate top. Oh. Yeah, that's where that frame comes from. Wow. <laughs> Up at the top of one of them, there's a, there was a, a hot, there was a spring, hot spring. And they had dug kind of a little pond so you could go sit in it. And then you walk over this big field and there's a real long drop and there's a beautiful stream there. And we went down to the stream and up on this bank, this hot water comes out. And so oh, you got nice. the hot water here and I and think I've seen happened. pictures of that. Yeah, and then the cold stream. And you guys are just bathing in it. <laughs> that was very nice. nice. Yeah. I remember going to a lot of rodeos with you guys. Oh yeah, we loved that. <laughs> yeah. Was that just for recreation or did you guys have involvement in it somehow? No horses. Oh. You know. Yeah. Um, he found out he he had to test me to see if I could ride when we were first going together. <laughs> he said, oh, we'll, we'll rent a horse. We'll rent some horses. <laughs> he said, I don't like that, you know, but that's it. Uh, so we did. Yeah. I, I was riding okay. He had to test me, go down a bank and all that kind of stuff, you know. And he said, well, you've got a pretty good seat. And I thought, is he getting fresh or does he... <laughs> <laughs> But he meant I sat well in the saddle. Yeah. That's what he called it. You got a pretty good seat. <laughs> I was asking some of your kids little stories that they've heard growing up, and one of the things is um, that you were pregnant and were getting chased by a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we lived next to a place that had goats. And Rocky was a, a little guy, and he got through that fence somehow into this uh, pen, you know, into this yard where they were. And he started crying, and I, I run over there, and I was expecting, I was pretty big, and I squeezed through this fence here, you know, and because uh, I didn't want to walk clear up around this other way. And I didn't know what to do. 
I couldn't get through that one. I couldn't climb over it, and I just kept telling him, you know, come here, come here, and he, he got over to me, and I threw him up over the fence <laughs> and got him away from it. But this goat was going like this right after him, you know, with his horns. Oh. Scared me to death. And then we come to this little hole that I went through, and I couldn't get it through it. I had to go up around. You could get through it the first time, but not the second yeah. time. But I'm getting out. <laughs> but I, my my tummy didn't make it the next time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I had to walk up around the fence. But that scared me. Here's a little rock and this goat, you know, and he was getting right up in his face. I, oh, I could just see things, you know, that were going to happen to him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's another story. I've seen pictures of, <laughs> I've seen pictures of you... Uh, Jumping on a trampoline. Did you oh, used to be yeah. in gymnastics? Well, that's that's another thing that Vern had. He built a trampoline, he and his friend. And uh, they used to go around to fairs. They had put on shows, you know. Oh. And so, well, the only thing I did on that was a backflip. I, oh. <laughs> I tried a front flip, I don't know why. <laughs> you have to wait till you get up at the top and then, you know, but I don't know, sometime I, <laughs> I'd start before. But back flip, I'd go up, flip. I don't know why, you know. That was a neat thing in Denver there. They opened up the YMCA uh, once a month, and they had the flying trapeze, and uh, I did that. And you go over to a catcher, and then he comes, and then you come back, and you catch the bar. And <laughs> He put on his trampoline act there, and I jumped up and yo-yo. Yo-yo was his name. The guy that used to run. I'd do a swan. He'd catch me in the swan. And <laughs> really? Wow. I wanted to do. <laughs> oh, like I don't know what they call them. These guys flip you up and you do. Oh. Um. But they said you're too big. I huh? we can't do it with you. Well, they were doing little teenage girls, you know. Oh. I was. Uh, I thought you could pull that off. <laughs> my size now, you know. Only I didn't weigh as much, you know. I thought I was little enough, but I <laughs> wasn't. You know. I would have thought so too. So <laughs> I was too big for that. <laughs> hmm. One thing that you mentioned to me off camera was uh, about meeting Catherine Hepburn. Oh yeah, your mom took me to that. It was a play in Portland. Yeah. And uh, she she, I don't know, she broke her ankle or something, and she was in a wheelchair this whole play, whipping herself around in this wheelchair. She was so good. I took that paint, that drawing, I'd done a Catholic pepper with me with the idea, maybe I'd get to see her and she could autograph it. <laughs> anyway. Well, afterwards, I told Betty, I said, I want to go see if I can see her. She said, you can't see her. How are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going back to the stage door, and she has to come out there. Uh -huh. And uh, some, she was in a, a chauffeur-driven car, and this uh, lady was standing there talking to her, so I just stood back. When she left, I went over, and I said, I thought that was so wonderful to see you and then for you to go through that whole play like you did, you know. Yeah. And I said, I want to show you something. And I showed her my uh, drawing and, and I said, and I'd love to have your autograph. She said, well, I can't autograph that, but you mail your program to me. Give me the hotel address and I'll mail it back to you. So I have that, I have that program. Yeah. One of the things that's been an outstanding artistic trait with you and Grandpa is the stained glass that you guys did. Um, how did you guys get involved in that? Well, it, it just, you know, fascinated us. And <clears throat> we read in the uh, uh, paper about, or maybe it was a senior citizen thing or something, uh, this, there's a school that uh, has classes, you know. We just went to that one class, and then I went on, and I, I made several, and I was selling them to 
This guy, you know, that has a hotel there. He used to make those little boxes. They sold better than anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, explain how you how you got commissioned to restore some of the antique stained glass there. I, I had had him take some of my stuff, you know, and, and sell it. And he said, "Well, do you uh, can you repair?" And I said, "Well, they taught us how, you know, in the class." And I said, uh, "I could try." And so he handed me this, and I got it home, and I thought, "Oh." Mm. This is hundreds of years old. Well, hi, baby. <laughs> there she is. Well, I said it's nice of you to come up and say <laughs> hello to me. Yeah, still running away. Yeah, I was just kind of scared, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just had to cut the cane and pull out the cracked ones and then replace the good ones, you know. Ever since I was a little boy, I remember you painting and you have art all over your house, and it's all watercolors, right? How did you get interested in that? Well, I always liked to draw. I used to get down on the floor <laughs> and uh, draw, or up at the table. I just, and my dad liked to, you know. So maybe, and mom was real artistic, and, and she had the imagination. Of, would go on and invent things, but I never did have that, but I always loved to draw, you know, yeah. and paint. You said that your teacher uh, mm -hmm. gave you some higher ranks on that painting right over there? Well, I, I got the best critique uh, in the class and the best critique I've ever had from her was that. But you know how I did that, I did, you know how you make these little squares on something and so that's the way you oh. yeah I just thought I'd go crazy before I got rid of that I was getting you've always had creative supplies for us grandkids I remember growing up you had a workstation with just about everything you could think of glue sticks paper scissors and oh. <laughs> all kinds of things and uh, I think that probably has a direct effect on why so many of the family members are Artistic. Oh. <laughs> What do you think about that? Do you think that's that, <laughs> passed that on? I just showed them, you know, how much yeah. fun it is. You know those wooden blocks? Yeah. They're the blocks, yeah, you, they sell them to burn in your fireplace, you know. And your grandpa took each one of those little blocks and sandpapered every edge because he thought they were too sharp or might have silver. Yeah. And how many bags did he, we make for that one Christmas? Each family, you know. Yeah. Each. And I still got some in the closet there. That <laughs> yeah. was amazing. He, he, he sanded those and made them nice and then I made the bags to put them in. <laughs> yeah. Coming to the Fort Vancouver Fireworks Show is a Ford family tradition. Aunts, uncle, and various cousins came early, 8 a.m., to scope out the best seats in the house. It's a wonderful thing for the whole family to get together and spend the whole day, and this just tops it off. <laughs> From my observation, seeing how other families interact, it seems like our extended family is uncommonly close-knit and there's a genuine care of, among everybody and we gather often. Mm. Um, how do you think that came to be? I don't know, it's just uh... <laughs> we did things together, that's all I know, you know, yeah. yeah. We weren't 
gadabouts, Rocky and I, you know, with other uh, people, but, you know, we did things with the family. A few times we'd have friends like the ones that we went to the rodeos with, they were really nice. And he went, every once in a while, Daddy would say, well, let's go have a beer or something. We'd go, when we were in Grants Pass there, yeah. go to a little place and have a beer, and then we'd come on back, you know, but yeah. <laughs> never did too much gadding around. <laughs> it's interactive, too. I asked Roy when I got all those toys, he said, oh, that's what you gave me when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> reflect back on your past, is there anything that you regret? <sighs> Probably lots of things, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think the things that we, uh, we wonder, you know, when we had to move from this place to that place, and what if, you know, we hadn't had to do that or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've uh, tried going back to church more and I'd like to go live somebody. I'd like Donna to go with me or anybody else to go with me. And I just don't go because i by myself, you know. But this one visiting teacher is real close to me. And she comes, you know, a couple of times a month, you know, and, and talks to me and visits with me and gives me my lesson. And I like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I wish, you know, that my, Kids would get more interested in the church because it's a nice, it's not a formal thing, you know, like uh, so many of them are. My folks didn't preach religion, it was just something we did, you know, it was just part of our life, you yeah. know. And I haven't got the kids, I never forced them. Maybe that's my problem, you know. Is there one thing? that you can think of that you have yet to do that you really want to do whether it's travel somewhere or some kind of activity or meet somebody famous what's the one thing that you have yet to do that I really want to do yeah I just want to make my uh, house in my yard <laughs> better and I want to I don't know how come I don't have the time to go in there and and that anymore. I haven't done that for a couple of years you know, yeah. since I stopped with my lessons. I was always taking lessons. And I would like to get smart and intelligent and do something with that. What do you call it in there? <laughs> <laughs> the computer? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I feel so dumb, you know. I... <laughs> Rick has spent so much time with me. He's been so patient with me. <laughs> Is there anything that you're grateful that you accomplished? That you're Well, I think I'm truly blessed with my family. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't have anything. Yeah. That's the way, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's my life, you know. Yeah.